Thank you all. Okay, my name's Austin. I'll try to come over here and stand up. Um, hold it down here. So I want to get um, to start off, kind of get an idea of um, who's in the room. So um, if you're a student, could you like, raise your hand or otherwise signal if you're a student, some students in here? Okay, so there's a good amount of us. Um, how about alumni of UC Berkeley? Yay, okay. A lot of alumni in here, a lot of students. Um, any developers? Yeah, right. <laughs> any developers. Uh, how about any members of the Berkeley Student Cooperative? I know we have some. Yay, it's got some members. I also know we have one of our amazing staff members here. Uh, so. Okay. So I also want to, yeah, I'm being asked to remind folks to please step in the room and come in. Can't block the doorway, guys. Come on in. So, um, the, my hope today in the limited time I have is to, um, both explain and give some context to what the Berkeley Student Cooperative is, if you're not familiar with it, um, but also try to share a little bit about um, my perception, at least, um, of the student experience um, as it relates to the, the affordable housing crisis. Um, last year, I was um, a member of the ASCC Senate, which is the UC Berkeley Student Government, um, and so that was really an interesting experience, and um, now I'm um, very privileged and lucky to be the president of the Berkeley Student Cooperative. So. Um, what my hope right now is to give a quick overview of the BSC, the co-op, um, talk about some recent trends that are affecting students, um, and talk about what that impact um, is on students, um, then explain a little bit about how the BSC keeps our rates low, um, and finish by um, looking forward. So um, the Berkeley Senior Cooperative, our mission is to provide a low-cost, um, quality, cooperative housing community to university students thereby providing an educational opportunity to um, students who might not otherwise be able to afford a university education. So that's sort of a long mission statement, um, but what that means is that we're really here to serve students um, who need that affordable housing in order to go to Cal. Um, I'm one of them. Um, you know, over 42% 40, over of our members are on Pell Grants, um, which means that they receive um, federal financial aid in order to go to school. Um, the Berkeley Student Cooperative, we were founded in 1933. Um, by a group of 14 students during the Great Depression who came together um, to use cooperation as a tactic, as a means through which they were going to be able to um, provide for themselves and, and get an education. Now, um, over 82 years um, later, we're lucky to have over 20 properties, um, 17 houses and three apartment buildings, and over 1,300 members. Um, we're a 501c3 um, nonprofit membership organization. Um, and we're student run and um, student managed, but um, we have the support of over 20 dedicated professional staff members, um, and they definitely help keep our organization running. Um, so to give some context to um, some recent trends that I think are particularly important, um, affecting students and affecting the housing crisis, um, they were outlined by some of my um, fellow panelists, but the first is um, rising inequality um, across the country um, and across the world. Um, and these are macroeconomic concerns, but um, as um, Dr. Barton outlined, um, they really affect uh, housing in the uh, Bay Area. Also, in the midst of um, racialized displacement and gentrification that's transforming our communities, um, and that we are, as students, um, as mem community members, are embedded within that process. Um, yeah, thank you. I'll slow down. The last um, big trend that um, I think is particularly important to note is the privatization of public higher education in the state of California yeah. and around the nation. And so, for folks who may not know, um, over the last decade, um, tuition at um, UC has increased over 300%, um, which is huge, huge, huge. Um, and um, as we see uh, public investment in higher education recede, um, it affects um, the university's ability to provide student housing, it affects um, students, um, and our ability to go to school. So what this housing crisis, um, how it impacts students is uh, multifold and very significant. Um, UC Berkeley has the fifth most expensive university housing in the nation. Um, according to U.S. News and World Report. Um, and so as rents are rising and as students are having to contend with these challenges, um, and Moni had talked about it, but students are having to move into um, units with more and more fellow students to try to um, get affordable housing. They're having to live farther from campus, having to live in units that um, have lower quality than they might otherwise live in. Um, 
and um, with student debt um, and the cost of education, the cost of this housing, students are having to work longer hours um, and go into de um, take out larger amounts of lo um, larger loans, um, which actually becomes a really important recruitment and retention issue um, at the university. Um, I know that working with different um, student leaders. Um, there's a problem with our ability to be able to recruit, um, especially low-income students, because when they come to Berkeley and they visit for the first time where they're reading about how expensive our housing is, they don't think that they can afford it. And so a lot of times they don't come to Berkeley, um, which is a problem. And um, it's also a retention issue. I know a lot of people who, because of the cost of housing, have not been able to stay in school. And that's a reality that um, many Berkeley students are contending with. Um, so, Kind of to give some context to, um, in the beginning of the year, again, we have over 1,250 bed spaces in the Berkeley Student Cooperative across our 20 properties, but at the beginning of this year, we had over 1,000 people on our waiting list. 1,000 people on our waiting list for 1,250 spots. Um, so clearly, there's um, a, lot of, a lot of need, um, unmet need um, in the city. And so um, now I'm going to try to talk a little bit about um, how it is that we keep rates low and, and how it is that we function. So, um, first and foremost, um, the BSC is able to provide affordable housing because of cooperation. Um, and I know that sounds maybe like an easy thing to say, but cooperation, in my view, is the tactic, the organizing principle in which, um, under which we're able to um, keep costs so low. Um, and so across our 20 different properties, um, students are the ones who are maintaining those properties, who are renting our commercial kitchens and our houses, who are renting, um, doing the maintenance work, um, doing everything like that. Um, every member has to contribute to a work shift, um, which is like their, their work for the co-op. Um, and in the houses, that's five hours a week, uh, which is pretty significant. It's a, like a part-time job. Um, and um, the other really important component of how I believe we keep rates low um, is through our democratic processes. We have councils at all of our units and that happen every week. And so at our houses, at our apartment buildings, members, students, the ones who need the housing, the people who are living in the community, we're the ones who get to decide how we want to spend our budget, how we want to run our, our property. Um, and that's really amazing. That's really profound. Um, part of that member control is also electing um, each unit elects um, board director, at least one board director to our board of directors. Um, and um, that's the group, that, the body that I help chair as president. Um, and our board is um, the decision making body um, in our organization for all um, system wide issues. And so um, we're sort of run like a, um, we have sort of a federated model. You could compare it to that. We have all across our 20 different properties. They're sort of semi-autonomous. So at the central level, we set um, what we know is we, we can budget to think is going to be like the water costs or the food costs for that unit and those members. But it's up to that unit to stay in line with those costs. And so if they're you know eating really nice dinners consistently throughout the semester, by the end of the semester, if they're not good with their planning, they might be um, you know eating a little not as good toward the end. But um, our units are the ones controlling themselves. Um, and to give some comparison, over the last three years, we've lowered our rates adjusted for inflation for three years in a row, um, which is really profound. I'm not sure, but I'd really like to kind of go out on a ledge and, and think that we're probably one of the, at least one of the few housing organizations in the Bay Area, or certainly in the East Bay, that's actually lowered rents um, consistently. And that's, that's a goal that we have going into the spring when we set our next budget. Um, and also, kind of as a comparison um, to think about, the average cost for our, our room and board houses is um, $735 a month, roughly. And that's including um, housing, food, internet, trash, everything. Um, which is really, really good. Um, unfortunately, we still have to keep rates lower. That's still not um, accessible for a lot of people. Um, but it's pretty darn good. Um, and at our apartment buildings, um, depends where you're living, but you can get down to even um, basically 500 a month, uh, which is really, really cheap. Um, so I think I was actually expecting, I, th I didn't know I had 15 minutes, I thought I was supposed to stick more to 10. So I'm going to close out by talking about some um, challenges that we have as a co-op. Um, 
even though, um, even though I, I really do believe um, in our model and I'm really passionate about it, there's a lot of challenges that we encounter um, even though we, we would like to expand. Um, and some of those being um, mainly um, the cap capital costs of acquiring new land, um, particularly because even in the whole city of Berkeley, we're not, we wouldn't be looking to buy um, property most likely in West Berkeley, very far from campus, or um, we really are looking around that campus zone, and so our, the amount of properties that we can buy on land is limited. And then also the facilities that we would buy um, in order to make sure that that's an investment that um, we can support over the long term. We can't just buy any house. We have to make sure that that house is going to be able to be a small co-op and be successful. Um, but again, we're also contending with growing demand, um, increase, increasing demand for our services and for our housing. And so um, we're definitely excited about working with so many of you here and so many of our community members to think about how we can um, create more local sources of funding. Um, we're also very interested in getting um, federal money. I know that's unlikely, um, but I don't know if people may know, but um, over at a Haste and Dana, Haste and Telegraph, we have a Rochdale Village and Femic Village Complex, um, and that was actually built, um, Rochdale was built in 1970 um, through a really amazing partnership with the um, federal government who gave us housing and urban development loans, and the city of Berkeley, and the university, and the co-op all coming together to help build that housing. And for the last 45 years now, we've provided um, our most affordable housing at that property. And so we're really interested as well in looking at um, how can we get that federal line item for those um, HUD loans funded again. Um, but ultimately, the university has to take a larger role um, and more responsibility. It's simply inadequate. Um, their response to the housing crisis is inadequate, and um, they have a responsibility to do more. Um, unfortunately, the university has is relying on um, public-private partnerships and um, really private private housing development as a as a means to address the housing crisis. Um, for example, on Dana and, and Bancroft across from campus, there's a parking lot right now that they're planning on developing into. Um, uh, university housing, but what they're doing is they're setting up these land lease agreements with private developers. So the developer, you come in, we'll guarantee you a certain occupancy over the lifetime of the loan, you build it and um, let us operate it. And that's the kind of the agreement they're going into. The reason that's a problem is because they're only shooting to get 10 or 20 percent below market rate. Well, market rate is not affordable, and so 10 or 20 percent below market rate is not enough and students are not gonna have affordable housing, even in the units that they're building. So there is a huge crisis and students need to be mobilized um, and work across our community, um, intergenerationally, um, cross class, um, cross um, racial coalitions to be able to make sure that we can create um, a city where um, everyone has the right to housing, everyone has the right to good housing, um, and where low income residents and students are not being displaced. So getting kind of like close to the two minute mark, but um, really, really grateful to be here, and I think um, I think I, everyone should recognize that the first step, one of the first steps in addressing the crisis, is us even having an event like this, and all of us being in the room to to talk about this problem. So, thank you.